Partners um, International Messianic Ministry. My name is Brother Scott Norris. I'm back here with you um, once again so we can take some time to glean from the scriptures. And so um, I'm going to take a look at, we're going to talk about love. Okay, love. Um, love, behold the Father, Ahav. Okay, so I'll explain that to you in just a moment. All right, so the word love in Hebrew is the word Ahav. Okay, Ahav. And so the word love, um, Hebrew, each letter in Hebrew is a picture. Um, originally was a picture. Each letter in Hebrew is also a word. All right, so Ahav is three letters, okay? The Aleph, the He, and the Vav, okay? And so, um, I mean, I'm going to say Aleph, the He, and the Bet. Aleph, He, and the Bet, excuse me. So, the, um, the, if you take the Aleph and the Bet together, you get the word Av, which means father. And then if you look at the He, um, its word picture is behold or revealed. So in the word love, we get the Father revealed. The Father is revealed through love. Amazing. Um, love means to desire, to breathe after. And the ancient sages taught that the sound of a, it, that uh, it was a deep breathing, the sound of a deer panting off after water. And David writes about this. He says, as the deer pants after water, bro bro water brooks, so my soul pants after you, O oh God. So he's describing his love for God, this deep panting, you know. And you ever hear a dog that's uh, been running around and he finally gets some water and he's, <laughs> you know, he's breathing hard, you know, because he's about to get that water and, you know, he's panting, okay. So this deep, desire of love. But in love, the Father is revealed to us. And so um, I want to take some time to basically talk about the love of God, and we're going to teach about it, look at the Word. Okay, so um, God, who is our Father, He is love. All right? That's found in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. It says, the one who does not love does not know God, for God is love, for his very nature is love. Love reveals the Father, the love of God. So we gotta take that, for God so loved the world that he what gave his only begotten Son. Why? He saw the condition of humanity in sin. He gave up his own Son. Goodness. He allowed his own Son to be crucified, to suffer, to be tormented, to be afflicted, to die. Why? So he could die for the sins of all of us, our transgression. Sin means to miss the mark or transgression of his law or his Torah. So if you saw any of my other teachings, you can go back and take a look at that Torah, that which comes from the man which was nailed on the cross. That's what the word Torah means. A lot of times we translate it as law. But anyway, the, the one who does not Love does not know God, for God is love. First John four and eight. Uh, if we were to first read First John chapter four verses seven through eleven, beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God or born again, born from above, and knoweth God. So he says to know God. Everyone he says, beloved, let us love one another. That's love each other, our brothers and sisters in the Messiah, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Okay? So the way to know God is to love him. All right? For he, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested, the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him, here in his love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atonement for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love 
one another. So if God so loved us that he covered our sins, that's what to what tone means. He covered our sins. In other words, he's acting as if our sins never existed. Why? Because of his love for us. And we got to love each other. Love covers a multitude of sins. And how do, how do we cover someone? sins. We don't ignore the sin. What do we do? We cover it with the love and grace of Yeshua, knowing that he died for them to properly atone for their sin, to bring them what? Salvation, to bring them out of that condition. All right. So we ought to love one another. We ought to love one another to the point where we are willing to crucify our own flesh, our own carnality, our own carnal nature, our own very natural nature or natural inclination which rebels against God. <clears throat> okay. Ahav in Hebrew, the word for love, means the Father revealed. Interesting. So if we're going to see real love, we got to see the heart of a father. And then more importantly, our heavenly father. Okay. Ahav, love, the Father revealed. Jesus said this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you have come to know me, you will know my Father also. Oh, from now on, you do, not, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Yeshua said to him, Have I been so long with you for a long time? And yet you haven't come to know me, Philip. He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? As John chapter 14, verses 6 through 9. So Yeshua is saying, essentially, when you see a son always bears resemblance to his father in most, most often times, right? And so he says, you know, one of, one of the things that he was declared to be in Isaiah is he would be called everlasting father. And so in a sense, when we understand the word love is the father revealed, he's saying he's going to be everlasting love. He's going to be an expression of the very love of the father. As a matter of fact, Yeshua, or Jesus, and I like calling him by his Hebrew name, Yeshua is the offspring of love. He is the descendant of love. All he knows is the love of the Father. All he could show humanity was love. Why? Because he's a child. <laughs> Glory be to God, he's an eternal being, but he's, he's a person that's only experienced love and the very love of God. And so he can only express that what he knows and what he knows is the love of God. So he says, have you not been with me? He says, wait, we need to see the father. He says, when you see me, you see the father. Why I reveal the love of the father to you. My goodness, God wants to reveal his love to somebody in a strong and powerful way. He wants to, you know, he, Jesus was saying, listen, when I healed the sick, when I, I, when I dealt with those who were paralyzed, when I dealt with those who had mental instability in their life, people who were uh, manic depressant, people who were tormented, people who were demon possessed, people who had addictions, people who had problems, people who were in re rebellion. He says, when I delivered them, that was all an act of my love and compassion. It was a reflection, it was because of my love for them. That's why I healed them all. That's why I want to heal your sick body. That's why I want to heal your mind and your, and, and, and your mind being tormented. Uh, I want to heal you because you're bi uh, you may be bipolar or schizophrenic. I want to heal you, deliver you of those things. Why? Because of my love for you. Jesus. The Father revealed. The son revealed the father. He is an offspring of love. He personified the love of the father. He made the love of, of the father, the invisible God. Yeshua was a living expression of it on this earth. Imagine the tabernacle of heaven on this earth. 
Remember when Israel built the tabernacle and, uh, that they were instructed to uh, in the wilderness? And so wherever God would send them to as they followed the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night, wherever they went became holy ground. Why? Because of who was with them. They would break down the tabernacle and build it right back up. Yeshua said, well, destroy this body and it will be raised up, right? So wherever, whatever ground they were in in the middle of the wilderness became holy ground. Why? Because he was there with them. And Yeshua, he is the expression of God's love. And God's expression of love is shown through humanity. Good God Almighty. Why? Because Adam was made in his likeness and image and Jesus is called the last Adam. And so therefore God wants us to express his love to the people that look like him, his offspring, his children. We are his creation, but he personified the love of the father as he walked the earth. He personified love. He's the personification of the love of God. He's the embodiment of God's love. He is the expression of God's love. He is the epitome of God's love on the earth. The demonstration of his power manifested his father's compassion and love for the afflicted, the oppressed, the diseased, the dying, for the widow, the fatherless, for the stranger, the prisoner. He expressed the love. He, he, he demonstrated that to people. He was the expression of compassion and of love. Ahav, God's love for us. The unspeakable love and tender mercies of God in covenant relationship with his people. That's from Zoahites, the lexical aids to the Old Testament. He is the unspeakable, his, his love for us is unspeakable. In other words, there's not enough words to really express it. I can't really find the depth in my own intellectual understanding to express fully the love of God but it's the unspeakable love and tender mercies of God in covenant relationship with his people. Deuteronomy 4.37, Isaiah 43 and 4, and Malachi 1 and 12. Deuteronomy 4.37 says this, because he, because he loved your fathers, he chose their descendants after them. Then he brought you out from Egypt with his presence by his great power. So deliverance or salvation is rooted in God's love. Egypt in Hebrew is the word Mizraim. It means a place of bondage. Egypt always became a type of the world with Pharaoh being the type of the devil. And he says, I brought Egypt I mean, I brought Israel out of 400 years of slavery, out of 400 years of oppression, out of bondage, out of having their dignity stripped, out of, out of being beat down, being taught hatred, being taught uh, not only hatred against them, but being taught how to hate themselves and despise themselves and, and, and not love who they were and, 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 and being tormented both physically spiritually and mentally. He says, I brought your fathers out because I love them. Glory be to God. My, my motive for doing it, my motive for bringing deliverance and salvation into your life is love. I do it because of my love for you. And these were people who were imperfect. These were people who did not follow him perfectly. These were people who worshiped other gods and idols but yet he loved them. He said, I did it because of love. My goodness. Isaiah 43, um, verses three through four. For I'm the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Saba for them. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Look, I put judgment on Egypt and these other nations. Remember the, 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 the plagues that hit um, Egypt, 
before Pharaoh was finally willing to let them go free. He says, wait a second, I, I, I sacrificed other men because I wanted you. I wanted you for myself. That's powerful. He brought Israel out of bondage. He brings us out of darkness and into his light because of love, because of his love for us. He just wants to pour his love into our lives. <clears throat> First John 3 and 1 states it this way. The apostle uh, expresses it very well. He, he articulates and he elo eloquently um, states, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Behold what manner. I don't even have uh, um, the vocabulary for this kind of love, but behold what manner of love is this, that he has given us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. The world doesn't know us, doesn't understand us because it doesn't know him. That's why we can't put the same standards on the world. The only the, 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 the thing that this world has is unbelief. And until they believe on him, they don't know the love of God. We got to become his vessels of love so that they might know it. Um, what manner of love the Father has given us. It transcends intellectual comprehension. How a righteous, unleavened, undefiled, holy, loving king would be willing to suffer and die for unloving, wicked, defiled, unholy, unrighteous human beings. Let me state that again. This type of love transcends intellectual comprehension because how does a righteous, unleavened, holy, loving king, would, how, would, how would someone like that be willing to suffer and die for unloving, wicked, defiled, unholy, unrighteous human beings? The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 6, for while we were still helpless, at the right time Messiah died for the ungodly. For rarely will anyone die for a righteous one, for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man, someone might even dare to die. But God demonstrated his own love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Messiah died for us. So very rarely would any of us, somebody might die for a good person. We ain't dying, none of us, for an unrighteous person. But God demonstrates his love to us that his own love towards us that while we were yet sinners and unrighteous, what? Messiah died for us. This is how he demonstrates his love. Love reveals our, love reveals our Father who and what we, who and what we, we love reveals our Father. So love reveals our Father, and who and what we love reveals, reveals our Father. Either God is our Father or the devil. John chapter 8, verses 42 and verse 44, Jesus said unto them, If God were your Father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Verse 44, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of lies. First John chapter 3, verse 7 reads, As children, let no one mislead you. The one who practices righteousness is righteous, just as Yeshua or Jesus is righteous. The one who practices sin is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The sons of uh, from the beginning, the sons of God appear for the, the son of God appear for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil. It is clear 
who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil by this. Anyone who does not act righteously or love his brother is not of God. Oh my God. So the measuring rod is in how we treat other people. Zoahites says this, above all else, we are instructed to Ahav, to love God more than anyone or anything else. Deuteronomy 6 and 5 um, states that uh, um, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Okay. In Luke chapter 14, 26, Yeshua said this, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father, mother, wife, children, brothers, and sisters, and yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciples. So he says, when he says hate, he means that your love for me is so great that, that everyone else becomes so, such a far secondary that you hate, you, you prefer me over them. Okay, so our love is supposed to even exceed that of our children, of our spouse. We're supposed to have this, so, such a strong love for God because if we have that strong a love of a love for him, then we can properly love those people around us. We all begin to understand that, wait a second, he died as a demonstration of his love. So wait a second, I have to die and carry my cross. I have to crucify my flesh. Come on now and follow him so that I can properly love them. Um, Matthew 22, verses 33 through 40. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law or in the Torah? And he said to him, you shall love Adonai your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The entire Torah or law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. In other words, this is the, the comprehensive overall teaching found in the law and in the prophets. These aren't the only two instructions. There's about 613 um, commandments. But the two greatest is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. That this is basically the essence of what the law, what the Torah and the prophets teach. God loves us so much. He understands our defected human heart lacks the capacity to love him proper, properly in our own strength. Romans 5 and 5, And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Galatians 4 and 6, And because you are sons, God sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Okay, so he, he puts his own spirit his anointing in Hebrew, so Ruach Kokadesh is like his own breath, his own wind, lives on the inside of us. He puts it into us supernaturally so that we can love him because we can't do it on our own. To love him with all our heart, soul, and mind, he's got to put the spirit of God within us. He puts himself in us to love him properly. Why? Because he loves us that much. He wants us, he knows that we cannot love him in our own mental ability. That's why we need the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. God, not, God is not simply all powerful, but is a loving, but, but, but is also loving and kind as a father. Father in Hebrew is the word Av. The Av is two letters, Aleph and Bet. Aleph means strength or leader and Bet means house. So so father is the strength or the leader of the house. Um, Aleph means to be number one. The Av, the father, is the founder or first ancestor as well as author or maker of anything. And we know that he's called what? Yeshua is what? The author and the finisher of our faith, right? F a father applies to anyone who cares for us, who cares for the needy, or a master or teacher, father is the God that we choose to follow.
So whatever God you choose to follow becomes your father. But we have to follow the true and living God, Yahweh. Glory be to God. We got to follow the God through his son, Yeshua, the one who sent his son because of his love for us to die for us so that, so that through the son we may find life, the life of God through him. And that we might know the depths, the width, the depths, um, the greatness, the depths of his love. Okay. Um, the word for anger is ayav. It's spelled with an aleph, a yod, and a bet. The, the aleph and the yod together form the word I, which means where. And the um, and um, al, uh, the word the aleph and the bet put together form father. So the word anger is a word picture for where is the father. So that's where anger and hostility is. Where is the father? You know, I was a child, grew up, I didn't have, my father was not very much involved with my life, and so that produced a lot of anger in my life. We have a fatherless generation that's saying, where is the father? Where are our fathers? Where is the love? And so when we don't have God in our life as our father, we become hostile and angry. That's why there's so much violence in the world, because there's, they're, they're basically expressing their anger, which says, where is the father? Where is the father in this? They need to know who the heavenly father is, and they can only come to know him through the son. They can only come to know him if we go and demonstrate the love of God and begin to preach the gospel to them so that they may know the father. Amen. So they may have peace in their hearts, so that people may have peace in their heart and their minds. So when we know the Father, we know his love. So I want you to think of God and to know his love and think about his presence and think about love. Okay. The picture is where is the Father? Without the guidance, the comfort, and the love of a father, a child becomes hostile. Humanity, without the guidance, comfort, and love of our Heavenly Father, becomes hostile as well. We become very enemies to God. So four things I want us to take away. Jesus or Yeshua, I love saying his Hebrew name, Yeshua, Yahweh's salvation, Yahweh's deliverer. Yeshua is a manifestation of the love of his Father. Number two, love, ahav, reveals the father. Number three, the word ayav uh, for anger is a word picture for where is the father? Without the guidance, comfort, and love of a father, a child becomes hostile. And number four, all human beings are created in the image of our father, therefore deserving of his love since his son died for their sins so that they might experience his love. And I pray that if you're watching this and you don't know the love of your heavenly father, perhaps you were abandoned by an earthly father, I pray that you will come to know the love of God through his son Jesus who died for your sins so that you might have eternal life and that you may know the love of God. God loves you very much. Um, Shalom and blessings to you. And I pray that This uh, message has inspired you to trust your heavenly father, to trust him with all your soul, all your might, to love him, even as he has, we love him only because he has first loved us. And you can experience and know the love of Christ, the love of God, the father. Amen. Okay. Blessings and shalom to you. All right. Take care.